Right. Good morning, all. Um, the message today. We're um, we're just carrying on talking a bit about Jesus, you know. Which, funny enough, in a church, you're likely to. Uh, that's, uh, yesterday, we uh, we headed to to Birmingham uh, for the Restored Conference. Um, so four of us went. Um, Ruby, uh, Mel, um, my my old work colleague, uh, Annie, and myself headed there. We survived Spaghetti Junction, which was which was nuts in in Birmingham. If anyone's been there, um, and yeah, I had the opportunity to to share um, with with a, a young lady who came to speak. She wanted to speak to to one of us, Annie or myself, and somebody said, "Hey, can can you talk with us?" So she said, "Wow, in this place, like somebody invited me, and I didn't know what I was expecting, but everybody talks about Jesus." No. She said, what is this that everybody talks about Jesus? So I was able just to, just to share a bit with her, you know. Um, but in church, it should be all about Jesus. Yeah. It absolutely should. Um, yeah, the Restore Conference was, was really amazing. You know, we're a beacon church, so we talk about domestic abuse. And we're there, you know, if, if, if anybody has any, anyone who needs any support around that. And, um, and to, to know that there's a, a church that understands and will be there to support, you know, it's, it's, it's so important. Um, but that, that was really good. This week, um, I also had another wonderful experience. I went to see uh, Brighton versus Liverpool. Uh, so I don't often get to see uh, the glorious Reds in all their, their beauty. Um, but yeah, I got, I got given, given a ticket to, to go and watch. Now, the thing is, I was, I was in the Brighton end. So, so, you know, there was like about uh, 25,000 Brighton fans and like about 2,000 Liverpool fans and they were all over there. And I was, I was with the, the Brighton fans because my, my nephew got me the ticket and he's a season ticket holder in Brighton. So, so I'm there and obviously I couldn't wear any of my like Liverpool stuff and uh, um, I actually wore blue because I was like, you know, I need to... I need to I need to, to play this role, right? Because, you know, had to absolutely keep it, you know, down. That, that couldn't. So, so the rules were, okay, want to get out of here alive. Yeah. Want to enjoy the game. Hopefully we win, get out of here alive. So what that meant was that I had to uh, celebrate when Brighton played well. And I had to complain when Liverpool played well. And, uh, and so I was like, all this, yay, come on, Brighton, you know. Yeah. And, and when Liverpool scored, which they did because we won 3-2, it was, it was a great game. And I was like, oh, no, like, oh, I can't believe, like, where were you? Oh, Defence just fell apart. Like, I was, I was criticising, you know, when, when Liverpool came in and, and trying to feign this, this, this show of oh, sorrow, you know. And, and, and I had to celebrate when Brighton scored. So I had to go, yeah, awesome, you know. And, and I just thought at some point someone's going to know. Someone's going to recognize. Because my auntie, she was looking at me and she, she was cracking up every time I was like, yeah. I mean, at one point, yeah, because Liverpool were winning and, and Brighton, you know, they were what, uh, it was 3-1 at that point. And, uh, and I was like, I'm, 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 I'm ready to leave. I'm going to go. I don't want to even watch the end, you know. And my auntie was just laughing at me. And, and the, the thing is, you're, you're under this kind of like cover of, I don't want anybody to know what I really feel inside. <laughs> I, have to, I have to keep it in. I couldn't, I couldn't be free. You know, if, if I'd have been over there with the, the 2,000 Liverpool fans, I could have just gone, yeah. But I couldn't do that. And very often life is like that, where you want to you know, be yourself. You want to, to show what's inside. But, but so much happening around you, so much of this situation that you're living in, that you can't. And I think it's, it's perhaps... A way of not being able to be yourself or not being able to display what is inside you. Unable to express ourselves freely. Guess what? In Jesus, you can express yourself totally, utterly who you are. Because he accepts you completely and utterly who you are. And you don't have to be, well, I'm surrounded by people, so I have to act in a certain way. I'm surrounded by Brighton fans, I have to act in a certain way. I have to feign, you know, oh, great, this is, this is awesome. 
In Jesus, you can absolutely be yourself. And so this message is called LLL Cool J. You guys know about LL Cool J, right? You guys, the, the, one, one of the, the classic rappers of, of, of the, the 90s, yeah? Gone on to quite a good acting career as well, actually. Yes. Yeah. John 6, 66 says this. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. He says to them, do do you guys want to, you know, everybody seems to be be leaving in their droves. They seem to be abandoning. So, was it something I said? Last week, the, the message, what's not to like about Jesus? What's not to like? But... Lots of people didn't like what he said, and so they, they just went on their, their, their merry way. They didn't like the fact that he was God. They didn't like the fact that he you know, said lots of things which were quite shocking. And he turns to them and says, do you want to go as well? And, and their response is, who else has the words of life? Where else will we go? You have the words of life. So I've got triple L today, L-L-L, and cool the J is for Jesus, right? Because that's how corny I am. <laughs> LLL Cool J. Three L's. My three point sermon. My three L's. My first L that you find in Jesus is life. The first L you find in Jesus is life. And what's the absence of life? Well, it's death. Without Jesus, there is only death. Without Jesus, there is only death. What does the word death mean? The word death absolutely means separation. When somebody dies physically, they separate. Their, their, their spirit, their soul separates from their body. It's a separation. When Jesus uh, says that you're dead in your sins, you're, you're, you're the walking dead. You are experiencing death whilst you carry on living. Death ongoing. It's the separation because of sin from God. So you are just walking, living your life, but it's, it's not actually a, a life. It's like a battery that doesn't have any power in it. It has the capacity, but it has no life in it. It is drained. And only connecting it to the source of life will that battery have power. So without Jesus, you are a dead battery. You have capacity, but there is no life. You are disconnected. So without Jesus, we are just bobbling along. And it's, it's actually dead men, dead men walking. There is no life in this, what we have around us. In, in this 80, 90, 100 years that we, we walk on this earth, if we're lucky. And then there's eternal separation from God. Eternal death. Jesus. When, when, when they said to him, where else are we going to go? You have the words of life. You are, you are the bringer of life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. This, this without Jesus is just grey and different tones of grey. With Jesus, you have life. When people ask me, why are you so flipping happy? Why do you, why, why do you come in on a Monday morning and you're, you're humming along or you're singing along? Was that Siri or what? <laughs> Siri, Siri's in agreement here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't believe in that AI stuff. It's, it's, it's all ridiculous. And I laughed. And my wife laughed. And Siri laughed. <laughs> you have the words of life. Outside of Jesus, there is no life. There are people that have a hedonistic attempt. To, I'm going to try to, 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 to grab life by the, the scruff of its neck and try to enjoy it. 
But the reality is that without Jesus, there is no life. There's just separation. There's just death. There's just... John 10.10, I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. It's more than just survival mode, guys. It's actually being connected. And in those, in those times when you're going, God, like what's knocking on our door? What, what is this, this threat that comes against us? I have the giver of life within me. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Anything in this world. Paul, in his letters, he says, O oh death, where is your sting? Bring it on. Because our God overcame death by death. He overcame death because he died. He overcame death. He rose again. Death couldn't hold him back. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of life is what God wants for all of us. So Jesus says, I've come that you would have life and life in abundance. What the world will offer you and what the world will take away is nothing compared to walking with Jesus. There's nothing that this life can give you that is greater than what Jesus will give you. And so hold on to the giver of life. Hold on to the author, the creator, the the author and the finisher of, of life. Life to the fullest. Only God can bring you to the potential of life. Only he truly knows a life worth living. That's why we need him in our life. John 1 verse 4 says here, here, In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now that's another L right there. Light. I'll read that again. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Have you ever experienced the power of darkness that would overcome light? When you go into a room, and without knowing exactly how it works, you just press a button. You just flick a switch. What happens to the darkness in that moment when the light comes on? Does the, dark, does the darkness hover around? Does it stick around? Does it say, I'm just going to take my time here and, and, and I will slowly, gradually creep away? It just disappears in an instant because that's the power of light. The light has come into the world and the darkness cannot compete. No matter how dark your day would be, it cannot compete with the light of the world. Because in Jesus, he is the life, but he is also the light. I am the light of the world. So the second L is light that that God brings into our, our, our lives, our existence. God brings light stumbling in the darkness, that, that's what the world is doing. That's what we were doing before Jesus came in. I remember being on a cruise ship, and uh, we, we, we did a cruise ship on our, on our honeymoon, and uh, we, we had a cheap cabin, which was right next to the, the engines. It was, it was like Jack, Jack and Rose, you know. We, we, were, we were quite, you know. But we had one of the internal rooms, and... When you shut that door and turned off the light, you could, there was nothing to be seen. There wasn't a crack under the door that, you know, your eyes would grow accustomed. I mean, we slept in until like 2, 2 p.m. And we were like, good morning, honey. And she was like, good morning. And we looked at the time and it was like, it's 2 p.m. We've missed the port. You know, we're, everybody's gone off and headed off for the day. And we're just, we're just we, we slept in. We just went, went and found the puzzle room. You just, you, you lose all idea of time in the darkness. Batman knows darkness. 
But in those darkness, you, I grew, I grew, you grew up in the darkness. I was born in the darkness. You know, the, living in darkness, you just lose the idea of time. And if you are going through the darkest day, then you know how much we need the light. Life can only really operate in light, you know, photosynthesis and all, all of your biology. You need the sunlight in order to cause growth, in order to have life. You, that, that's why they go hand in hand. That's why it's talking about Jesus there, and it says in him was life, and in him was light. Because they travel together. If you've experienced darkness, the absence of light, and there are dark days that we encounter, being a Christian, not being a Christian, but we can turn to the light. We can declare his light over us. We can, we can speak his life and his light over our situations. So when we're stumbling, when we're, we're struggling, when we're battling, when we're, we're, we're going through these dark days, recognize I can hold on to the life, I can hold on to the light. And with faith, I'm going to flick that switch. It can get pretty dark. It can get pretty grim. But just know this. Darkness can never overcome light. When that, dark, when that light comes in, the darkness has to flee. So we need the light of Jesus in our lives. 1 John 2 verse 8 says, I'm writing to you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you. Because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light. And there is nothing in them to make them stumble. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light. You see, in Jesus, we have life. In Jesus, we have light. And in Jesus, we have love. That's my third J. Sorry, my third L. In Jesus, we have love. And this is, this is real love. It's not, it's not the love that the world would put out, which is based on everything I want. And if I don't get it, then I don't love anymore. Or my love fizzles out, or my love gives up, or it's conditional love. We have agape love, which is unconditional love. I love the fact that Annie loves Jesus more than Annie loves me. Because loving Jesus and being loved by Jesus means that she can cope with me. She goes to the source of love and has that now, that she can source that in order to share it with me. She knows that I love Jesus more than I love her. Now she doesn't get envious or jealous about that because it means that we have the source of love. And now I can show you. It's like the cup of water getting annoyed with the well. <laughs> but you need the well in order to fill the cup. So don't get jealous about it. Go to the source. Jesus is our source. When we need love... And, and there are times in life where you really need love. If you ever say, God, I, I want to I wanna show love to the world. I want to know how to love more. You know what God will send you? He'll send you people who are difficult to love. He'll send you circumstances and situations where love really would just dry up and dry out if it wasn't for Jesus. People who are able to love in so much adverse situations. And God sends that because he wants to exercise love in you. But you have the source. You have life. You have light. You have love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Can you imagine a life without light? Can you imagine a life without love? You see, Jesus' answer for us when, when the disciples said, where else are we going to go? You have the words of life. You have light that's shone in our hearts, that has brought light to the darkness. And you have displayed such love 
that just doesn't make sense. That you would love me, knowing everything about me. That you would continue to love me, knowing everything I continue to do. How I continually resist or push back or just throw it in your face or just, you know. Jesus spread out his arms and he died on the cross. And that is how much he loves. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. 1 John 4, 9, and this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. 1 John 4, 16, and so we know and rely on the love of God that he has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Whatever you're going through, whether you need more life, whether you need more light, whether you need more love, Jesus, he's your your triple L. He's the one you need. He's the one you go to. That's why he's called called (laughs) Jay. That's why we go to him. He's the one we need. Our therapy is always going to be the same answer. Jesus. Our answer is always going to be the same answer, Jesus. It may look different. It may take hours and hours and hours of, of talking and sharing and getting to that point. But, but really, at the end of everything, that's why pastoring is so easy. You just say, well, go to Jesus. <laughs> you just say, Jesus is the answer. You know? Go to Jesus. Yeah, he, he knows how to deal with all of this. I, I don't have a clue. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm limited. But Jesus. When we worship, it's Jesus. Why do we worship? Because you are love. Because you are light. Because you are life. That's why I worship you. Where else am I going to go? Who else will give that to me? There's nothing on this planet. There's no false God or deity or religion or way of life or, or riches or power or sex or There's nothing that's going to give that to me. You are the only one who has the words of life. So guys, whatever you are going through in the darkest of days, when death feels like creeping against your door, when you feel low, when you feel sad, when you feel abandoned, when you feel rejection, when you feel whatever it may be, he is your triple L. He's what you need. So we really need his life, his light, and his love. And not only are we to receive it, but we're also supposed to give it out. That's why God says, you are the light of the earth. You reflect my light and you go out. That's why we're told to love one another. That's why we're supposed to bring this life to other people. Because you are now a carrier of his love, his life, his light. You're a bearer of all of that. You're an ambassador for Christ. He puts that responsibility, that trust in us to carry that. And when you need it, you got it. You pull it out of you. This is what I have in my life. This is what I'll share with you. We are called to carry all of those. That's the challenge. First of all, to recognise it, receive it, and then it's to carry it and share it with others. So whatever you're going through, whatever others are going through, he is the triple L. He is the one that we need. Let's pray. Jesus, you are here with us. Holy Spirit, you are present in our lives. And you know everything we're going through. You you know the battles that that each family is facing. You know the struggles. And and even though we have all of this in you. And even though you are sovereign and you are seated on the throne. It doesn't mean that that this life and all its curveballs just just stop. So we repeatedly come back to you again and again. We repeatedly trust in you. We repeatedly declare you are the light. You are our life. 
You are our love, our first love. Lord, our lives are yours. I just pray that, Jesus, in each family, that you will meet those needs. You will come and you will manifest yourself once more to whatever we need. Jesus, you are the answer. You are the way, the truth, and the life. So we look to you. We trust you. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just place your hand on every life here. Every person here. And and maybe we do represent an entire family. And maybe we are praying for those around us and and people who are going through stuff right now, and friends and family who are facing difficulties right now. And maybe we are the ones that stand in the gap. The Holy Spirit, we just ask you, just come and have your way. We thank you that, that you are everything we need. And we bless you, we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord hold us, our, our head high, because we know who is our God. We know who is our King. May we have his peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.